Hi everyone, this is our channel Around My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. Hello, my name is Brenda and this is how I embarrassed myself when I was about 14 years old. Before I tell you my story, let me highlight a few points. All teens experience some amount of anxiety at times. It is actually a normal reaction to stress and sometimes it even helps them deal with overwhelming situations. For many, many teens, things like public speaking, final exams, or even going out on a date can cause feelings of anxiety. For some teens, however, anxiety can go beyond these typical symptoms to negatively affect friendships, participation in activities, and even their schoolwork. And do not get me started on how being a teenager is made of the devil's blood. Okay, that was an innocent joke, but I do mean it. So back to our story. I was sitting in class behind the cutest guy in my grade. His name was Josh, and I just wanted to ask for his phone number, but I was painfully shy and terribly afraid of being rejected. But it was almost time for the school dance. I wanted to go with him, but there was no way on earth I could have done it face to face. I tried to talk myself through the anxiety and convinced myself to actually go through with it. I debated with myself for a while, missing most of that day's in-class instructions before I finally decided to ask him. And I did. I did ask Josh for his number, and he agreed. He slowly took my phone, typed in his number, and handed it back to me. I felt relieved. I had finally gotten the number. I mean, I was wrong. There was nothing to be anxious about. I had made it much worse in my mind than it actually was. It was actually nice to realize I was anxious over nothing, to be over it and have his number. I got home later that day and I was so excited to call or text Josh. But because I'm socially awkward, I decided to try and text him. But the message didn't deliver. I checked the number he gave me and noticed that it included the digits 911, which indicated to me that he had given me a fake number. Maybe he was trying to avoid me. I suddenly became aware of how weird I had acted towards him. I didn't have much of a relationship with the guy before asking for his number. There was no rapport between us, so it came across as creepy when I asked him. I also asked him in the middle of class by tapping him on the shoulder. There was nothing smooth or even normal about how I went about it. I hadn't acted immoral, but it was painfully awkward, socially inappropriate and thus doomed to fail. The encounter was painful, but from it I suppose I learned some lessons on how to appropriately socialize. I also learned that it is incredibly easy to miss obvious signs that other people are giving you when you're anxious, because you're so absorbed with yourself that you miss social cues. Looking back at how he was clearly uncomfortable with my request, which he made clear by not smiling and by hesitating in agreeing to type the number. Had I gotten out of my head and paid attention, I might have noticed how he was acting and how that clearly reflected how he felt about me and our interaction. It makes me question, is having high functioning anxiety easier than being trapped in your own shell? Frozen with anxiety? It may be the lesser of two evils, but for me this experience turned into purpose and it built my self-confidence. I see it as a step, but then improving self-esteem and self-worth will have you high functioning without anxiety. That is the end game. But you know what? Write your own script. You can't go on if someone else is writing your script. And I know that a lot of kids at school felt the same way. They didn't feel good, and I didn't know why. Kids will relate, and this is so freaky, and it makes anxiety even worse. You have to go to know that you are okay in school, and you cannot know unless you go. Getting over anxiety is not some hippie mumbo jumbo, and it took me years to get over what I call life fright. And I learned that the very hard way. Now, does the devil joke make sense? Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think, because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I love my family. We were always together. We were happy. Until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work. A big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us. 
especially my dad. He was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought, and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him when he walked through the door. But something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough. And the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day, and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, then took it back to my room. But when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak, but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. Suddenly, everything changed. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. My mom and I were too scared to move. But then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money, and if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I would just give him what he wanted, until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals, and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests, but all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctor suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper, but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left, disappearing from our lives. No one knew where he was or what he was doing. A year had passed, and he came home. He sounded good, kind of like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done. But to me, nothing he does makes a difference anymore. I'm still in the dark. That's something I'm going to have to live with my whole life. I can't change that. What do you think I should do?